wounded. Hello, everyone, MSUM fans and UND fans alike. We are starting our first game of League of Legends uh, for the CCL. And right now we have MSUM again playing against. I don't come back stronger. Right now they have they used a setup for Not the, a on a website to make this go through. They used a website to go through and uh, set this up so that they can streamline the picks and bans. Process. So right now we, uh, it looks like we're gonna have Shen and Jax on, as well as possible Viger pick for MSUM. Viger. 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 It's Viger. Either way. I've always called him Viger anyway. It doesn't matter, honestly. Like really? a lot of people play, say Viger, some say Viger. Uh, then mm -hmm. on the UND side, we have Darius Vi and for now, we're going to see what that third pick is going to be. Uh, and it is a Vladimir. That is a good pick against the Vigor right now. Come on, yeah. I won't hurt you. Uh, they I do promise. have a ban on Olaf, which is, is good. I mean, th these are bans that I've seen that I'm looking at that are actually targeting the MSUM jungler. Uh, and that is yeah. Slay J. Is but I mean, they already yeah. have Jax right now. It doesn't really affect what they were going for on the UND side. So I'm not 100% sure why they Zeri just got Seraphine. And we just picked Ser Zeri and Soraka. It looks like um, the UND team is going to go in for more of a all in type of team with a little bit of tankiness yeah. and push power from that Vlad and Adarius. The Vi being very viable mm -hmm. in the jungle. But MSUM is going for a little bit of a safer pick with the Shen uh, and the Soraka. The Zeri pick is really strong for MSUM, and Chef Freddy is actually... I, I've watched him in-game. He's pretty good. Very viable, yes. Um, yeah. Viger might have some issues with Vladimir, but if you... Mm -hmm. With everybody else, the Vi, the Leona, the Darius, trying to go in, even Seraphine, if they all get caged, mm -hmm. they are potential stun locked for that Jack stun to have Zeri just pull through this game. And I mean, with the power of Shen top, I definitely think that this will benefit MSUM a lot. I believe this one is played in the series, right? No. So you are no. you are play. It's a best of three. Series. Best of three. Yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like most other games. While they are a little bit longer than some other games, it's always been best of three. Um, the only time when it was best of ones was when it was a really weird setup for them. And it's not it's not my favorite. Um, it's called the uh, Swedish tournament style where you play one game and then out of all of those games, you just continue playing to see who gets the most wins um, mm -hmm. against each other. So it's like a bracket of four and you play those four players. Uh, you play all four of those teams, so it's a little bit different, but it's whatever. For now, I definitely think that the power of that draft right there is really good for MSUM, but I can also see that UND could take this to, in a completely different way. I mean, they have the team fight, they have the interrupt with Leona, they have the interrupt with Seraphine. I mean, you get the stun on from Leona. These are very strong picks, and Vi can go straight into the back line to get that Zeri or that Viger. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all dependent on how they play. Um, and I think yeah. MSUM has a very good 
from watching them practice, I definitely see that they are very good at objective control. They are very much about getting totally. those dragons and getting those uh, Rift Heralds. And hopefully that can lead into them getting some good team fights or even some good picks. They're very good at picking somebody else and then coming out on top just by doing that. And while Seraphine and Leona is a very strong lane, I have seen Zeri and Soraka come out really strong. Yes, it's going to be a bit of a of an aggressive lane from the Seraphine Leona, but I know uh, how Cloud plays as a support and Chef Freddy True. play together, and they can play in a more defensive way. Um, so while this is very much so a powerhouse team right now on the UND side. I definitely think that MSUM has a has a chance. I am really excited to see Rocket Bop it play top lane for the first time competitively. Yes. this game i definitely think that uh we're gonna have to watch out for a lot of these team fight situations just especially them. since it is um going to be a big it looks like it's going to be a big strategy from the yeah. und side welcome to summoners Let's see. it looks like it looks like they're doing the standard invade. No, this is a, this is a standard array of setups where people just basically start the line, waiting for to see if anybody's invading. So far, there is no invade whatsoever. Darius is very pushed up on top lane uh, for for the other <laughs> for the UND side, but honestly, that's not too bad. Um, Jax is going back to most likely grab a pot, and if we take a look right there it does Minions show that he changed spawned. to an oracle lens right there so mm -hmm. that is definitely what they were looking for and as we start to get into the first few minutes they're going to be looking to make sure that these <laughs> first few waves of the game do go to the people that really get I mean, like I said, in in the matchup of uh, Vlad versus the the uh, Viger, it's going to be a little bit difficult because Viger can just pull straight through if he does get stunned and go yeah. into an, an attack against Viger. But with with the with our bottom lane here, I think that we might have enough pressure that they will be taking Vi down there and Viger can probably help out as in a four-person gank. And this looks like just like a standard uh, jungle padding from both, like, uh, yeah. from both junglers. Vi screen at red, not normal specifically for, for, by generally because she does use mana so it's kind of weird that she started there but it might have just been just in case there may have been an invade that they're doing a reverse jungle for that but so far everybody's looking fine um. right now msum is slightly pushed up lane in boss and also in top looks like Rocket Pop's bit does look like they are kind of a pressure on them. Uh, I mean, as one of the lower ranking players, I 
did see that that might be a problem on the MSUM side, but that doesn't mean that this is a lost lane. They are definitely playing very, very defensively right now after getting that damage, but there was no question, like, a leave ping for the yes. And Jack is now soloing the like, in the river, but just but barely surviving. Can... We don't know. Yeah. If this might still be a kill That's onto Jax. And that first, first blood. blood for UND. <laughs> Again, that is the power of Vlad. Uh, uh, looks like, down, looks like Shen did looks a like very, a... Oh. very bad uh, rotate down. Uh, nobody else was in position. Mm -hmm. They definitely should have waited on that um, just so that they could have a little bit more pressure on that especially so early on and mm -hmm. with now having a 2k lead in gold this might be a little bit of a difficult early early game but it is still a jack's jungle i mean we can msum still can pull this out they did they did ban Ekram that um that slay knight is actually very very strong on so this is yeah. something new that we've been seeing still though i mean uh if we want to look at some of the some of the items and what the starting builds were yeah, and or also CS too. Yeah, it definitely it definitely looks like things are going decently. Um, yeah. I mean, while it is MSUM has gone up from being 2K down just to a 1K deficit, but we still have yet mm -hmm. to see them be in a power position right now. Everything is just very very equal in yeah. where the positioning is from from UND and MSUM. I definitely think that top lane should ha have a have more of a uh, defensive positioning, especially Shen versus Darius. Well, Shen can yeah. do that. But it would be hard. There, it looks like it was very close to a, a, a good Ooh. engage on bottom lane. <laughs> but just barely missing that. Yeah. Liger does chunk the Vladimir out a lot mm -hmm. and does get a push away from... Gets, makes Vladimir go very well, so taking a lot of pressure like, off of that. It looks like top lane actually Shen is pushed quite close up to UND. If we could get an eye on that, please. Yeah, definitely more pushed up lane, surprisingly. But this is this is rocking. actually because the the Darius on the UND side has actually frozen the lane uh, just oh. enough so that mm -hmm. they they can continue getting yeah. minions. Like, look at this. If you notice, Rocket Pop, it cannot get close to this to this tower yeah. because if they get close, they'll get pulled in. If and yes. if they try to go for those last hits, this this lane will have it so that the that the, tar the tower will target them. So it's a little bit difficult for them to even get some, even to get gold. Right now they're just trying to stay as close as possible to make sure that they have it enough of the experience so that they can get to level seven. Right now, I mean, they are in a power level right now for Shen. At level six, they can go and help another teammate, but then that just lets uh, the Darius go and basically just take over that lane, especially with. It looks like ooh. Yeah, it looks rocket. like. Yeah. yeah. It's like, again, that's definitely gonna be a top gap for at least beginning of the game, since he'll miss out. He'll miss out on another. Especially since their their top laner is 
like I said, the lowest rank on the team. It's going to be frustrating, but it's something that they are yeah. going to have to focus on doing. And yeah. I think that, like I said, if they're going to continue this match or the, these next few games, Rocket Bop is going to have to play a little bit more passively, a yeah. little bit more defensively at their own tower, because if they let uh, the UND team mm -hmm let them just push that in or even freeze at their own tower, they're not going to mm -hmm. get the experience. They're not going to be able to get that, that gold that they need to help the rest of their team. But it does look like there are some over on the UN looking to over at that. And it looks like... Shax might be setting up for a scuttle potentially. Maybe. Rift Just seeing how Yeah. Yeah, Rift Herald looks like it's going to be the play. Vi does go in on Vi. But it looks like it is a trade from instead of the Vi yeah. getting the kill, it is Vlad, which is a little disappointing. However, that is a, it is a decent trade that does leave, uh, it looks like... leave the dragon up for UND. But it does look like you're, you are right that the Jax did, was able to get the Rift. Harold yeah. from that. Now the question is, what placement is he going to choose, or they are going to choose, for the rift? I mean, if, if they're having trouble up top, I think it would be a very beneficial if they put it up there. Yeah. Uh, just so mm -hmm. that they can have that going. I do want to see what each of the teams are building so far in the first 10 minutes. Um, and it looks like so far they do have quite a bit of power on the UND side. I mean, it's 15 to 85 uh, CS yeah. score on the Shen Ooh. versus Draven. Yeah. Or, not Draven, serious. <laughs> But if you look at everywhere else, it looks like they're Everything playing fairly pretty, even. Yeah. I mean, Other 60 than, on the Jax, okay. 58 on the Vi, yeah. 82 and 95 from the Viger uh, Vlad side. But that doesn't really, to me, seem like that much of a difference, especially in the late game. Uh, 99, the 89, yeah. Seems like to be getting a kind of gap in a way. And then there's also... Zeri's definitely uh, yeah. doing fairly well against this bottom lane team. And mm -hmm. UND is pushing to get this Drake. And yeah. as the first Drake of the game, it is very important, especially as a mountain Drake. That's going to give them a lot more uh, throughout the game. Looks like they're trying to get the like, out of oh, it. So like, uh, yeah, they are they're looking to make this more difficult. Liz, the Seraphim Randy. does manage to get it from that, and yeah. and Jax does go down to Vladimir, putting Vladimir at four kills from mid lane. While while Krieger has not died too many times to this, this is going to be a problem late game, uh, especially if Krieger cannot get the kills on onto the Vladimir later in the game. Like I said, right there we sh we see that that uh, issue with the with the cage against the Vladimir. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of a lot of wards against uh, or on you and he's side right now, showing up on the blue side right now. I mean, if you look at there at Dragon Pit, there's a vision ward and then there's also yeah. two other wards going over towards the towards the the jungle camps just to watch where Jax is going. And there's not very much blue wards around for for MSUM. I mean they're in tri bush and river bush and top river bush, but there's no other Yeah. But it 
looks like there might be some action down in bottom lane. Looks like Vlad is Vladimir down. does try to get the kill on that. But it does go off. Oh, but Jax is ganking at the moment, too. Jax is trying to get that Vladimir before it goes yeah, off, but unfortunately but nothing happens. Yeah. So the scuttle Rift. player now the Rift does yeah. go into mid. Jack's just trying to clear out the minions so that they can get a few blades uh, yeah. extra gold. And now it looks like the uh Rocket. the Shen pick against Darius is working decently, but they definitely are not rotating as Darius is going towards middle in the river. And that might be dangerous for the Jacks up there. And it does look like that Mike is still just following right behind that too. There is a that kill onto the Jax. I just think there was a little bit looks of like miscommunication right there. <laughs> or Vagar no, looks like he's being potentially too sided. It Which just looks like he, he, he was just so getting sorry. dove right there yeah. from, from Vlad. But I don't think that they were setting up for, for the... For, a, for that, it definitely looks like they were just trying to get the blue. But now they may have potentially jumping onto Rocket Bobbit. Yeah. And if I was Rocket in this situation, I would be just stressing out so much. I mean, knowing that there's four or five people potentially waiting in one bush. Well, they'll know that it shouldn't be four or five. It. it yeah. If you look at the bottom of the map, they're, they're yeah. ADC and their support are staying mm -hmm. fairly in just in position, team just trying to see us, especially since the the kind of little bit of power that MSUM has is in the bottom lane. Yeah. And, and it looks like they have pushed up bottom lane, too. Um... I wonder what. It doesn't look Chirac like that. It looks like they're Jack. keeping it in mid, in the middle of that lane right there. Uh, especially since. And it looks like we might be getting first turret. And we did get first turret. We did not get first turret. First power. We got our first power. But, uh, yeah, that's what I. Yeah, not, not like that one, but, that. but it looks like this team fight might go in the in favor of the mission as yeah. the Vlad has to back up. And this is all set up for Drake, too. Which... Everybody's, yeah, everybody's trying to set up to be in position to take the second Drake. But right now, they're raising that too much. Especially since is getting targeted by this Vi. And that's what I was saying earlier with Vi, being able to get into that back line. Just not able to really stay present in that fight. But they were able to get out safely, but they still lose two people. I mean, they lose the Jax and the Viger again. Uh, and without their jungler, they're just losing jungle Jeez. camps. Putting, putting UND farther ahead. I mean, now we have a 6k deficit on on the gold lead right now. And also probably Drake too. I mean, Drake was definitely going to go yeah, down right there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's an unfortunate thing when you have your jungler down that when that happens. Yeah. Uh, hex gates aren't well, active gate now, so, I mean, so maybe this can benefit MSUM being able to get into lane. But again, they have it looks like three turrets down on MSUM side, where UND only has one down. Uh, yeah, no, it looks like UND is going to be prepping for Scotto potentially. Yeah, they're they're looking for a Rift Herald right now, yeah. uh, most likely, or checking it to make sure that MSUM isn't going to go for it. Rocket Poppet is pushed up a little too far up on top lane and does have to yeah. retreat away from Darius. And Darius is just pushing in on that, but thankfully Rocket was able to get the the uh, invulnerability from the damage right in time of that, uh, of the, I believe that's 
a cue it from looks like from Darius. You, Wendy is working on Baron soon. They're they're going to go. Get, they're going to get the Rift Herald, and then that will make it so that once they finish this, Rift uh, the Baron will be coming up in at about 20 minutes. So it's they're just trying to get some pressures at all levels. I mean, they have pressure top. They have pressure mid. Bottom lane for MSUM still really hasn't left there. They do have the Zeri pushing bottom, and everybody else is kind of in top lane, kind of in a smorgasbord of fight. But Ooh, yes, Jax does yes, get the kill uh, using that using that uh, that smite. To get the and again, Dark Void does get the double. no. Dark Void actually got that. That was Vigor getting the kill uh, with I think his Q. It looked like, or it was his his R his. Uh, his ultimate, and honestly, that just kind of helped them a, a little bit. I'm not gonna say that it can turn the match around, especially since it's 311 right now. But you know, it's definitely something. Zeri is definitely keeping up right now. I mean, yeah. without the flash, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult to stay bottom and continue that pressure, but now Shen should be able to push up a little bit more just because they, while yes, they are down, uh, they have that teleport up. They can just teleport away if they really need to, but I'm not 100% sure what their plan is. Um, it looks it like, looks yeah, they're going to be going yeah, towards Baron. It doesn't look like MSUM is attempting to, yeah, to contest this. And well, it, they're just kind of setting up to watch that. Now, they know that Vlad is bottom, so I mean, they could potentially just go in at this later, but it, they just do not have anybody in the... Uh, in position to try to really take this. It looks Soraka like is the only down. one. Yeah. I think they're just checking to see if there's anybody there, but it looks mm -hmm. like UND is going to reset and just kind of stay away from from trying to do anything. Probably going to buy some more items if we can mm -hmm. take a look at that scoreboard once again. Uh, we can see what else they have. And, and of course, it looks like um, that, uh, we have Triforce, we have Death Dance, we have Mark Treads, and it's a little blurry for me. So I I did the pains there. But I mean, that's four, four items on Drake and Darius. And this is just going again. Another team fight going in the way of you and me. And it just does not stop. We have Zeri, the only one alive, not really with their team when that happens, but with that Baron buff, I don't think MSUM should have forced that fight. Yeah. It was not a good time to do it, and if they were going to force the fight, they should have done it, in my opinion, at the Baron pit when they were trying to do that. Uh, well, the inner, mo inner towers are going down for MSUM. And it looks like the only the only ones that are left standing besides the one that Vlad is on are the base towers. Yeah. And it looks like Shen is trying his best to get Darius out. Yeah, with with the Baron boosted minions, it's it's just really hard for these players to go against the UN side. I mean, Vlad is able to life steal just so much. And while Jax has his has a stun, it's not enough to keep this Darius out of the MSU base. But it might it looks like they might be able to get the Darius down. And they do. Darius unfortunately unable to get the damage onto Zeri. And now it looks like they are going to be going mid to protect that inhibitor, but yeah. it looks like yeah. Looks like it's Vi is looking... actually taking Drake too, also right now. But yeah, I mean, at this point of the game, Vi should be able to take it by herself without having any issues, especially since MSUM cannot leave their base. Yep, 
I got a tomato in the oven. Right now it just looks like... Dad's gonna steal the red buff. <laughs> Well, right now they're just trying to steal yeah. everything from from MSUM so that they cannot they have they don't have anything to get any experience or any gold from. I mean, this is a very good play from UND to stop them from having any gold. I mean, if we look at it, top lane only has one item completed on MSUM, and everybody else looks like they only have one item as well. The only person that has two items on MSUM is the Zeri Chef Freddy, and that's, it, it's not looking good, especially yeah. since they've given up three Drakes and, Dra and Baron, 416 and 13k down. This is, it's unfortunate, but it definitely looks like it's going to be going the way of UND. Looks like Jax might be getting into a fight with Darius. Potentially. You mean Darius getting in a fight with everyone else? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that it's the opposite not way around. Darius. Jax is not does not want to fight against Darius right now, especially with his with the damage that Darius is doing. But it looks like <laughs> MSUM is just getting pushed still into their base. Um, and yeah. they can't really stop this head-on attack. I mean, super minions uh, coming in to play now with the middle nexus down. Not nexus, but the inhibitor. Top inhibitor going down. Bottom inhibitor down. They only have two towers left to protect the nexus. Nexus turrets yeah. getting dove right now. Quad. Yeah, it looks it's a full ace and everybody on MSUM is down and they are just racing to kill that Nexus and the first game going to UND. I feel like next round MSMU might try some earlier um, scaling champions, potentially. I think MSUM needs to focus on uh, realizing that there is an issue with top lane. I mean, the the rank sure. differences between Rocket and ELO Dad, I mean, or ELO Dad. I'm, I'm assuming it's ELO Dad because they use ELO in, in, yeah. uh, in game. Mm -hmm. But... For now, I definitely think that they need to focus on getting getting Rocket Boppet onto a, a character that they can most likely just stay a little bit outside of people's ranges, make sure that they are just relaxing and having a little bit yeah. more of a, I wouldn't say a f more fair time, because all I see, I, there's no, not going to be any fairness in this, unfortunately. It does look like uh, MSUM is going to be going to red side this time instead of blue. So maybe this might help them, uh, but we'll we'll most likely have to see in the next one. For now, though, I mean we're we're just waiting on the spectator and the fifth player for. Um, for the uh, UND team.
we're gonna take a little quick break while uh while everybody gets set up for the the next round the next match uh so we will keep an eye and once the next one starts we will be right back at it
recommend skipping. It looks like we are now back into the uh, ban phase of this new new game. Uh, right now, Talia band, uh, Lulu band, <laughs> Zillion band, Udir band, and Vlad band. I think that's a good plan for the Vlad pick, especially since it does remove a lot of uh, potential counterplay from the from the NDL side. It looks like they and Rocket it. chose that. Yeah, Rocket oh. definitely swapping to a more aggressive character, and yes. they do I've get Hecarim on Selene. But it does it does look like it's the set versus Camille uh, with Poppy and Silas right now. So and we got Lysandra. I do not which is a pretty good pick, I'd they say. do they do lock in that set for that. It looks like these guys are um, these are what they are going to be picking. Or actually, no, they're banning right now, but they're they're holding on to those two picks or those three picks each. So I'm assuming that th this is how it's going to go. Um, so MSUM has a very lockdown team again this time around, with Camille, and Poppy, and Silas Zaya. being very aggressive too. Ooh, not a Zaya versus a Misfortune. Last I night think... I ended up playing a game of League last night and... <sighs> I was I th Zaya against a Misfortune and it was I think Zaya should- funny. will- is- is good against Misfortune, especially since they have the root and the and the stun from the uh, from the feathers, or, especially with a yeah, seraphine too. bottom. Yeah. I mean, the only weird thing right now, unless if I'm not a whole hundred percent sure what they're doing with this Amumu pick, but I'm assuming that I, I feel like that would be the one that goes jungle normally. But maybe UND trade, has a. Really. I mean, they sh would have traded by now at that yeah, point. Yeah. As but it might be just we may have be, been delayed. I'm not 100% sure. But even then, I mean, if that's the case, then it's a poppy support. And that still would be not super great against this yeah. team of MSUM. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> While we wait for these next two minutes and 53 seconds for the game to start, um, what what do you hope that happens here, uh, Payne? I hope that I hope to see a very aggressive top, especially okay. against Camille, since we know Set is a uh, buff, um, is very tanky against um, Camille, and oh, uh, is it? Um, let let me think one second. That's fine. I definitely I'm agree with you yeah, yeah. with that. I, I do hope that it's a little that. bit more aggressive. And then I hope that the one thing against Misfortune is that she has, I think it's her W, the where she rains all of the, the like the grenade rain fire thing. Jiggy, which rain from above. Yeah. 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 No, that's her. That's her and AOE that, slow. Yeah. I know what yeah, you're talking about. And that, yeah. And that will be kind of annoying, especially if they put it with a Mumu. Some of them, uh, um, one of the Mumu's main. With and then, with Seraphine and but, Zaya there, I think I think they should be okay. They good, yeah, but they have good range, definitely. Yeah, Seraphine definitely has a really strong range uh, mm -hmm. against these two. If this is an Mumu support, <laughs> even if it's a Poppy support, maybe they do tra trade and we are unable to see it. And it's a Poppy yeah. uh, misfortune. That's still good, mm -hmm. um, but and then. The, the, I mean, Silas is very aggressive himself, but Lissandra has that that peel and away potential just by herself for her, to just get herself safely out of situations like that. So and I mean, I'm excited because you were hyping up Hecarim for Slane. I'm excited to see what it looks like when they play Hecarim. I've watched Slane play Hecarim so many games, and by far. 
it is his I, I feel like it is his most powerful character. Now, we did see a weird rework of Hecarim a little bit, putting his damage instead of on his um, his Q into his I believe it was his E, the one that does an AOE around him, which is OK, because Slane still has the ability and knows how to play that against other people. And he has done very well on being able to just run somebody down. I mean, if you look at everybody, the only person that can really run away from Slane on his Hecarim would possibly be Camille. Because the other yeah. ones, yes, Amumu has a has a a root snare, which is kind of weird. Um, the, Camille has a way to get away just by using her, um, her basically her her attack on Titan abilities. Um, <laughs> Poppy has Titan ability. Poppy definitely has the ability to knock him away. And Silas yep. does have the ability to slow and, I believe, stun. But Misfortune doesn't have a dash. Amumu, without his bandages, is unable to move fast. Uh, these are very slow characters, and this could be difficult for the Welcome for the UND group if they can if they do get caught in the beginning. Again, they have that nice river lineup, making sure that nobody is invading, nobody is attacking. They do, su for some reason, have the retop. It looks like they might be going in for, for just some, some uh, information. But oh, it does look like Rocky oh, does get first blooded. I'm not 100% yeah, sure why they were looking probably. in that that early, and or why they were even went there at all. I mean. Amumu did flash for that, it looks like. Yeah. Or no, that looks like they were pinging that... Uh, no, that was that was uh, the Amumu yeah. flash. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. Ooh. That isn't a lot of money before the game starts for that. I mean, I believe it's only 100 gold at most mm -hmm. per player. I mean, if we can get the scoreboard up, we can take a look uh, real quick to confirm that. Um, it doesn't even show that there's any gold right there yeah. uh, that has been earned. I know there's a different setting, but I'm not 100% sure. But it does go to the Silas, so I mean, the good thing is is that it wasn't to the Camille, so that it will not be as worrisome when it comes to late game. But, but it looks like the CS score is going pretty well for Dark Void in mid. Um, yeah. everybody honestly is just, they're playing a little bit more safe, uh, with, with Rocket Bop yeah, it, definitely. again, staying a little bit more under their <laughs> tower, the but time. with the range against, uh, on Camille, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to get into it. So while y you were saying that you want to see a little bit more aggression, yes, I do too, but Camille has that way but of looking at, at, uh, the, yeah, yeah the set. <laughs> But again, uh, MSUM's bottom lane is doing fairly well at keeping uh, pressure on it. But I mean, still, Rocket is half health against this Camille, who has the range to continue, but is still able to get a bit of the bit of CS right now. And again, like I was saying, this Seraphine Zaya, I know you said you don't like it against that, but. I think that's more of a preference because no. I've definitely seen no, it's, it's, Zaya's me, Zaya's just destroy these lanes. Against, it's, it's up it's up against Fortune that I don't think yeah. Like. yeah. in the seek playing. Granted, I, yeah. Granted, I do think that with the uh oh it does look like it does with look the like the Ooh! It does Almost. look like that, oh. um, that Rocket Poppet did uh, get a trade kill under Tower though uh, while we were watching which that. Which is pretty nice. And, and then it, it looks like Camille is teleporting up top, so then they can continue pushing turret. I definitely wish that um, that Rocket Poppet would have teleported up right there instead of walking yeah. back, because this is just a <laughs> bunch of experience wasted. Yeah, that they're gonna be missing out on. Exactly, and. They're not. They're Especially not. Especially for like this early in the game. And I, d I do not like them going towards that dry bush right there. 
to ward only because they sh they're not going to be pushing out anyways they they should be staying in that uh that experience range they're already down and i think they're definitely going to have to worry about um armor but amu does go in onto the seraphine and early on seraphine doesn't have that much going for her against the Amumu, and Amumu does get the ignite onto Seraphine, but is, but Cloud 12, Cloud C12, I should say, is definitely keeping it very even and keeping them not unable to get give them the kill. And Rocket looking a little bit more, like a little more uh, confident on set. Yeah. I mean, even with that. Even with that display right there, it looks like we might have a gate going on the uh, into the river with Hecarim up top. Mm -hmm. If it looks like yes, Ooh. oh, it was a good plan, but they did they did <laughs> have the, the uh, they did have the ward in that in that uh, river bush. So yeah. unfortunately, even though Hecarim was trying to get that gate gone. They weren't. I don't think that it was uh, the best for for MS Gamer. Seraphine does get the slow and almost. It looks like the stun, but it. She is able to poke out Misfortune just because she can hit farther. Patient waiting Ooh. in mid lane against Silas, but again, still Ooh, having some issues. And they're on bodying him. <laughs> I don't think they're bodying him. I mean, they, they didn't do it that much damage, but it yeah, definitely was but... enough to deter him from going in uh, and staying yeah. on there. Especially since they did have the uh, poppy in the top river right there. Yeah. Looks like poppy's roaming up top. Yes, they, I feel like they're gonna it. they're gonna try to do. It. <laughs> yeah. It, That's a good idea poppy from set. Popped the uh, popped the uh, predator. <laughs> but was not able to actually do anything right there. Mm -hmm. um, again, that the Zaya feather is just doing work on the bottom right now. I yeah. mean, I think this is what could really keep them in game, especially if they do mm -hmm. have some good team fights, because it doesn't just yeah. stun one person. If they get hit by, yeah. what, three, uh, three of the feathers, yeah, everybody is stunned. They also have a bunch of stun from everybody else too. I mean, they have they have the Instance. Lissandra, they have yeah. so, they have uh, Seraphine and the uh, the Zaya. I mean, that's a that's a lot of just anti-engage pressure. Mm -hmm. It looks like the. The lanes aren't really pushed up on MSUM side, keeping everybody yeah. everybody pretty safe. While while yes, um, Pocket Poppet is unable to get the minions, they are still able to take the take the experience from where they're standing. Yeah. And while they aren't going to be getting a lot of items, I feel like this is really good for them. But I don't know if this was the right play of trying to trying to engage on that if that yeah. happen. I definitely think that they should go back and then teleport back into like Looks like Yep, it looks like this MSM might be is trying to take potentially Drake. MSUM is definitely uh, yeah. looking for more objective, like... Keeping them away. Yeah, you're right. And then we They're... tried to yes. do a one hit last hit. But it missed by a couple of seconds. <laughs> I wonder what uh, we see the CS what Dark Void is looking uh, yeah. looking to buy because he does have 40 ACS uh, and it looks Twice like he's going CS to last chapters. Like... Right now, I think this is. Uh, I mean, like I said, with Rocket up top, I definitely think that they are doing the best they can. Um, it is only 3-1 compared to last game where they, it was about 5-0 to zero at this point of the game. Yeah. And the CS lead is still only about 2k. 
So I mean, it's not, in my opinion, that bad. Plus, MSUM did get that Drake. They have, yeah. they definitely have the, those buffs from there. And they're uh, looking at potential rift. Also. Yeah, cool. I definitely think right now with where Amumu is at, this isn't a potential for MSUM just because Hecarim, while he is amazing and Lane yeah. is fantastic on him, definitely needs to get those levels because he needs to get level he need he just hit level six. He needs yeah. those he needs the extra levels so then he yeah he needs the items as well i mean he's only on a sheen and he like really powers up on that Hecarim those first two and poppy well Hecarim's going Hecarim is definitely off. going in looks like oh, they, no. do do this, they do have the stopwatch on on the silas but it he barely gets away Hecarim's going up against poppy now it looks like yeah pop they, they are the trying struggle. to counter the uh, the the rift herald but unable to do so. Like I said, the the damage that happens with that. And Cloud is a got killed in bot lane by a Yes, support. it it just looks like there is a lot of a uh, lot of damage going everywhere. Zaya was actually able to pick up a kill onto the misfortune, yep. uh, and Rocket Pop it did did fall in top lane, but they do still have their teleport so i'm hoping that they are able to get up to the to top uh, yeah as soon as possible to try to stop that top drop. Yep, it looks like they're they are they are teleporting top, top so that's that's good i mean i still want them to stay a little bit safe because that poppy is up there it looks like they might dive this tower onto and the top laners like, and it looks like potentially they do drop the, the rift herald onto top yeah. But I don't think. Yeah, they do get two plates, down. but it, it it does not go any farther. But top lane is looking like it may drop super su uh, soon. And it looks like potentially. Wait. Mm -hmm. Never mind. I was gonna say that potentially Hecarim was planning for a gank, but right now he's just taking. Yeah, I think they definitely need to uh, need to do that. Um, it looks yeah, like definitely it looks like Rocket Puppet is getting Killing dove speed. under tower and is Oof. easily removed Dying. from top lane by the Camille. And Silas is transitioning maybe to bot to pick up a kill. They might be trying to uh, set up for getting that Drake, so they're probably to, trying to get yeah. somebody on one of the, the Either that players the in bot lane. That looks like ooh, Freddy got taken. Chef Freddy definitely had the ability to Oh no, not that, Cloud also. But ooh. he he was unable to uh, dodge. And I think he may have misclicked yeah. into them. Because that definitely looked like a he did not mean to go. Yeah. Or well, he could have also been charmed by misfortune too potentially. Misfortune doesn't have a charm. I thought that she does. No, she has a she has an ability that make uh, she has a, a strut ability that makes her move faster. Rampage. Ari has a charm ability that that they do, but misfortune mm -hmm. does not. Um, Looks like Seth got Camille's R. Yeah. I mean, Camille's R is pretty strong, especially against the good. Um, and and Lysandra got that was, killed under tower. Lysandra got... had... what? That was... that was uh, her moon ulted. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like the second Drake is going, most likely going to go to UND. And with 10 to 2 at 13 minutes, it definitely is looking like a mirror of what happened last, uh, last round. Yes, they when they took Drake. They did take Drake, yes. Um, they have... I'm trying to do math on the fly and I'm not a math major. But... Me neither. <laughs> 5k ahead right now, but... 
in the first 13 minutes, 5k is a lot. Uh, and right now, I mean, I don't know what MSUM can do to stop this, <laughs> stop this slow bleed of this going into the hands of UND. Uh, Which, like, top hit? Yeah. Top hit just came down to bot to gank. But it does look like it almost, they do almost get a kill on Silas, but he somehow turns it around with that spell damn. Uh, with Sandra trying to get away, but the Camille out of nowhere, without the pressure from Rocket Bop It, uh, mm -hmm. is able to come in and take it from uh, right near their tower. I'm not like I said, I'm still not 100% uh, sure what MSU can do at this point, especially 13-2 and almost 10k down in 15 minutes. I mean, they do have bounties on towers right now, but will that be enough if they can somehow get something? But, yeah. damn it, Rocket is still just getting beat up and... Again, the same thing happening, even in, in mid lane, Camille just following, getting free kill from that. Unfortunately, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking, I would say. Yeah. But Especially for somebody that's new to this. Yeah. At least this is just the first set for the season. <laughs> Looks like Hecarim is trying to go after a Mumu. What's the sun doing behind him? Ooh, but they got stunned. Yep, the Mumu the ulti to stun Hecarim. And I do not know how Poppy. Ooh, Poppy. Um, the Mumu just killed Hecarim. But it was... Oh, it, it must have been the Ignite. The Poppy mm -hmm. getting the Lissandra. That's... Two down for MSUM, 16 to 2 now. And uh, again, see. 10k down. Yeah. It'd be nice to see, like, the, their builds right now. I. To see what they have for items. Looks like. I miss you. I. I don't. This is a tough call because yeah. at this point of the game, MSUM can try team fighting, but with the power on the other team, I mean, they have mm -hmm. full built items. MSUM has two full built items. He's on every where MSU or where UND has five mm -hmm. full built items, and they're working on their second. While that doesn't seem like a huge power spike, I mean, yeah, they just have the AOE stun of a Mumu, and somehow. A bottom of Mumu worked fairly well for them in in this game. Hecarim can't really do anything about this Rift Herald and just has to watch as they just the UND team takes it. Like if anything, they could maybe go after the Silas and mid. Oh, I would like to see that. It's just, yeah. it's hard to get that, especially since they have pressure on bottom lane from Camille. This, and they also just have Poppy sitting in that side, waiting to go in onto, like they're even pinging onto Rocket Pop it right now yeah. for that, for that Rift Herald. And Ooh. I don't know. It's there's, I'm not 100 percent sure. If, uh, Rocket can actually survive this because yet while they're under their own power, it's just not enough yeah. to stop the stylus from there. But However, it might be oh. Lissandra they does were... get yeah. does get the kill, almost dies themselves, but Darkoid played it very well. That spell vamp just innately in uh, the Silas's abilities is just crazy. Camille still pushing bottom, just not being contested. And 
who can really contest against it? I mean, the, one of the best players on MSUM gets almost killed quickly. Somehow, Silas in... Or not Silas, <laughs> Seraphine. <laughs> Seraphine and Zaya are able to get the kill, but I think it's be only because it was under time. Potentially. Cloud, I don't think, no. yeah, I don't think Cloud yeah. would have been able to contest that. All he was trying to do is keep them away as much as possible yeah. and yeah. see when the the Drake is taken so that they can time it right now. But still, 35, 26, that's almost, it's still around 10k deficit with UND have already taken, what, three towers from MSUF. And it doesn't seem like MSUM really has the the strength to go in on any of the side lanes to do any type of 1-3-1 style pushing or team fighting at all either because Camille is just that strong. And then you see right here, Rocket was just ever so slightly too far away from the, their team yeah. and just gets blown up. I mean, it's... This is going to happen, and while they have four players in and this team fight is still not looking like it's going anybody's way. I mean, if you see that, Hecarim just, as well, just being destroyed right there. The only real objective that I would say MSUM should be looking to do is to try to to try to somehow steal Baron away so that it just doesn't become a steamroll, but even then it's it's hard when you have so little pressure on the map. I mean they do have they do have good boarding into their own jungle, but that's kind of pretty much it for them. They don't have they don't really have much pressure on the map right now and it's it's showing. And you can see that Camille, yeah. And Camille is going to continue pushing up bot. Too. Yeah, I mean, this this is just what's going to happen. They're yeah. going to continue pushing bot because they have. If MSUM commits to stopping her, that's that's mm -hmm. going to have to be at least three people to try to stop her. But then that yeah. leaves open this Baron, and MSUM mm -hmm. can't really afford to have this Baron like taken. Rocket Pop, it's again just not in the right position at the time and gets taken out once again. <laughs> MSUM is just slowly getting pushed in deeper and deeper into their own towers. Hecarim looking strong in as a pick for this team is looking like he just can't he, do anything. I mean, he's standing next to his tower and he can't really get too much going for any of the, any MSUM team. I mean, I mean, Camille just getting another kill onto Dark Void. Yeah. I mean, Elo Dad showing that he does know how to play really well. I mean, like I said, right there, he's getting, almost getting another kill, but... But Chef Freddy is able to, it looks like he had to burn his exhaust and his flash to get that. But even getting Elo dad out of the game, they, have, they still have the jungler in Northside. And with the power of just all these AoE ults right there, push MSUM straight out right after that fight. Three down on MSUM, only having Lissandra and Chef Freddy. Dark Void is just staying behind his Zaya, and neither of them can really push up right now. Yeah, totally. Red team's The range of the cannon minions just being able to <laughs> safely kill the, the tower without having any issues. And right now, I mean, the, the CS score looking... The only person that is ahead on MSUM is Chef Freddy Sorry. against mm -hmm. uh, sac uh, Sacred Turnip. I mean, yep. but that 
even if you look at that, that's not really changing the fact of the game. I mean, having two two uh, items and still not being able to get nearly as much damage out. Right? And then Camille. they just took Terret, Camille. Did. I mean, there. This look, just looks like yeah. a repeat of last game, just on a, mm -hmm. on a different side of the map, and it's yep. it's just. This is how it's gonna happen sometimes. I mean, these mm -hmm. players are very, uh, D are very, very good. I mean, MSUM still has really good players. It's just mm -hmm. there is a difference when it comes to um, <laughs> just the overall skill is just showing for UND. And while I love and, to root yeah. for MSUM, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Especially since Alex also... just got the kill on <laughs> And then they just got Drake also. I mean, I expected them to get yeah. that Drake after they killed him. Yeah. Because there's no other, there's there's no competition right there. Yeah. Um, but again, MSUM is just doing as much as they can to stop any type of push against their lanes, but with these with these current powered minions, it's just hard and UND can just reset at any time to get back into a more advantageous position. Totally. I honestly don't like that uh, they keep putting uh, Rocket back up against this uh, Camille. I think yeah. that they should be committing the the Zaya and, oh, yeah. Yeah. and the Seraphine to yeah. defending against top him. and just mm -hmm. having a 3v3 mid for that just because if they can get Camille out at least they don't have that person like they do not have Elo dead jumping in on mm -hmm. two people again just completely with with one and jump eight. in and right now uh, i mean this is enough time for for und to go in and get the other towers i mean they they have minions and they're using teleports to keep the minions alive enough so that they can kill the, the towers and get this nexus this game and do you want An upsetting loss for MSUM because this is the first game uh, of the yeah. of the season. season. But I mean, there this shows that there's going to be a lot to work on. I mean, mm -hmm. looking at what happens, I mean, they definitely need to figure out something. I mean, I don't even know where to where to go with it. But I mean, overall. <laughs> There are there are some pros and cons of what happened. I mean, Chef Freddy still getting still going positive three two kill ratio. Um, Cloud's still doing pretty well. Um, the issues I think are just the focus onto Rocket Pop it right there. It's not that they were just because they were lower rank than everybody else, but it's because yeah. the enemy team did see that weakness and they went in mm -hmm. on that. It's also, Slane, I mean, even he was able, like, he's a higher ranked guy. He still yeah. got got targeted and was getting killed. I mean, it's it's not just all about rank. It's literally they just got outplayed that game. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to talk, uh, we're going to bring in uh, the captain of the MSUM team. Uh, and this is uh, Slane. Uh, we also call him Christian. So give me one second. Let me see where he's at. If I can actually locate him. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can also put some in chat. Hello. Hello. Oh. 
so a disappointing loss definitely yeah um but i wanted to get your opinion on on a few things um do you have an idea of what you guys are going to be working on specifically or do you guys kind of yeah so overall i say for us uh for our first game um Definitely with the rank difference, uh, it was definitely tough to get used to, but one of the things that we noticed was vision. Uh, we definitely need to get a lot more vision on the map. That's where mm -hmm. a lot of our things stem from, is they always knew where we were at, and we weren't able to get any picks because they were constantly placing vision. So yeah, uh, definitely working on that, just warding, and then just clearing out everyone and making sure to do callouts more. Yeah, definitely. I, I did see It did seem like there was a little bit of miscommunications here and there. Um, Sometimes their mm -hmm. top laner Elo Dad, uh, just being in the right place at the right time, be, uh, without communication, but also their supports roaming up through jump through uh, river. And I mean, do you think that uh, communication is something that you guys are doing good at, or do you think that uh, there might be a little bit of room for improvement? Yeah, I definitely say uh, communication. Uh, definitely something we had to work on talking a lot more. Because uh, okay. some of the times when we got caught out, uh, we got collapsed on. Uh, just letting your team know, and then again, kind of the vision, just knowing where your opponent's at, uh, that definitely help a lot. Because especially when you're facing someone who's you know three, four tiers above you mm -hmm. in rank, uh, they're they're really good at the game and they're masters at it. So mm. uh, you definitely have to try everything you got just to you know trade even with them. And yeah. sometimes that's the best we can do. And even, granted, I I applaud you guys for not giving up on those. I mean, it is a struggle. I mean, I've been in situations like that before in my own competitive ranked team. So I really do like to see that there is, uh, there was some, they, there was always that little bit of fire feeling you guys there. Yeah. Um, Aubrey, do you have any questions or any comments? Um, one question that both of us were talking about was about how Pop It Rocket kept on going up top by themselves. Why didn't you send like Zaya and Seraphine up top to try to like keep Depend away against Camille? Yeah, yeah, Camille. So, uh, right away we knew it'd be a struggle, um, because one of their highest ranked players facing someone who's relatively new to that position. Mm -hmm. uh, our focus mm -hmm. is more towards trying to push our bot lane and just getting the leads elsewhere, um, okay. instead of trying to stop the bleeding top, because then, overall, we could have maybe stopped the Camille on there, but then the bot lane's gonna end up getting ahead and a lead from that, so yeah. we're okay. kind of just taking mm -hmm. our chances and trying to cut our losses elsewhere. Well... I still think you guys did pretty great for your first game. Yeah, I mean, totally. like you said, this is this is your first time playing in this league. Um, there are skill deficits here, and somebody that is new to a lane. I mean, I applaud Rocket for giving a chance to even do that. Um, is do you think that you might change maybe where people play, or are you going to keep people there uh, in their positions? Uh, I'd say we could look at possibly changing between like top and jungle, uh, but I'd mm -hmm. say more or less just trying to work mm -hmm. on uh, mechanics and just maybe watching, reviewing it just to improve overall. Um, yeah. Even though we did lose, I'd say those are honestly the best games to kind of learn from because yeah. facing a few masters and stuff, there's a lot that we can see that they did where we can try to implement that in our future games. Exactly. Well, totally. I really appreciate you coming in for a interview um do you want to say anything to uh to the fans that are watching right now uh thanks for watching and um next game i believe we'll do a lot better or at least have a lot more teamwork involved with it um well, we have a question from chat if you're yes. fine with asking um from bloody anger 31 what surprise do you guys from the other team uh so I'd say overall, um, they played kind of how we expected. Uh, their top lane, they definitely did good at kind of funneling uh, mm -hmm. kills to their mid lane. They're mm -hmm. definitely going for scaling. Uh, but I think just overall, their map awareness on capitalizing when they knew uh, that we might not be fully paying attention, they were always there to whenever we made a misplay. So I think just constantly staying on top of things. 
True. I actually have a, a weird question. What do you ex what did you expect yeah. from the Amumu uh, support? Honestly, I, I saw that and I was really confused. As was yeah, I. that was such a strange pick. Yeah, I, I thought that uh, Amumu was going jungle. Uh, to be Same. Honest. So when I saw I saw that, uh, definitely a weird pick. Um, but he did roam a lot, so I'd say that's one good thing that we might try to implement too is having a sport that's constantly roaming uh, mm -hmm. paid off big time for them. So uh, definitely True. a strange pick, but it worked for them. Yeah, and especially I know that Cloud is a very good support, so I'm kind of shocked that I didn't see him roaming as much. I mean, I know that they did have a lot of pressure on bottom after a while, but it seemed like they were pressuring their bottom fairly well, so I would have liked to see Cloud in mid lane a little bit more. Um, yeah. But still, great game. Um, again, thank you for coming in and having an interview with us. For now, I think that is all we will have for tonight. Again, everybody in chat, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and please come again on s next Sunday for Rocket League and Valorant, as well as next Monday for our wonderful MSUM League of Legends team. I'm Sam, and this is my co-host. And Carrie. And uh, we hope you have a great rest of your night. Yep.